Hello coders, I'm Matt Landers, co-founder and CEO of Covalence, and I'm here to do a walkthrough for you on Bootstrap and how we can import it and override variables and things on your own and really customize Bootstrap. So I'm gonna do this from the beginning of creating a server, um, ready for development and everything so that you could deploy it rather than just pulling it all in and seeing it work. I mean, I wanna see how you could do it from scratch. So let's do that. If I mess up a little bit, you'll have to forgive me. I am doing all this from memory, from scratch, and almost certainly going to have a couple issues in here. So let's see how good I am. All right, here we go. So the first thing we need to do is uh, init this. I'm going to show you I have just a empty, empty directory. So you could do this from, uh, we're just going to use Node and Express and everything to get this going. Also going to use TypeScript. So I want to show you how to get it all set up. So if I just npm init, That'll get us our um, our file. I'm gonna do init dash y, and that'll get us our package JSON file. So there we go. We're started here. Advanced Bootstrap. I'm also gonna put this up on uh, my GitHub so that you can pull it down as a starter project if you want. Uh, and I'll update it if people ask me to because I'm sure that after today um, that everything will break because it's Node and people break everything all the time. So. <laughs> Uh, let's do this. So the thing that we need, the only thing we need from a production standpoint is Express. So we're going to build everything here. I don't know why that erred. That's weird. Let's try that from outside of here. So npm install Express. All right, cool, cool. Now we need a bunch of stuff. I'm going to install my types. I'm going to get Express. I'm going to get uh, node, <clears throat> I need TypeScript because I'm going to use TypeScript for this. Uh, node SAS, this is so we can compile the SAS down. Uh, we need Bootstrap. And then I've been using npm run all to run my dev server uh, in parallel. And I need Nodemon to watch um, our files as we're coding. So I'm going to get all this installed. Boom, boom, boom. And then we're at, that's an install. Let's go ahead and create a bunch of stuff over here. So we need some folders. We need a source folder. Uh, I'm going to create a SAS folder. Um, I'm going to create a public folder for like our HTML files and stuff. Uh, and a server folder for our compiled uh, server. So in our public folder, let's just go ahead and create an index.html. Uh, this will be the one that we'll do some testing on real quick. And we'll just call this bootstrap overrides um, let's put some bootstrap in here already even though it's not going to work yet uh, we'll do a row we'll do a column we'll do a header hello bootstrap all right cool got that uh, in our sas uh, folder let's create a main.scss file um, and in here we're going to import uh, bootstrap so we're going to go to node modules slash bootstrap. Oh, wait, we need to do dot slash here. Uh, actually, dot dot slash. This is where we're at. Uh, slash bootstrap slash scss slash bootstrap. You don't need the scss there. All right, so this will make sure that we're pulling that in when we're compiling. And this is the main thing that you need. So I installed bootstrap via npm install. And now I'm importing Bootstrap uh, in my SAS file. So that basically pulls in everything from Bootstrap, and we'll look at how to override some stuff in a minute. In our source folder, we're just going to put a server.ts file. And in here, we're just going to create a simple Express app. Uh, so we'll say from Express. That's not Express. Uh, we'll do const app. Um, if I can type. We just call that, create an app. Uh, we need to have a pull of our static files in because this is just going to be a really basic app. We're not going to do any type of templating or front end stuff. Uh, so we're just going to do express.static and go to that public folder. So we're going to serve everything in that public folder as static. Uh, it'll automatically serve index.html uh, at your root. So that's why this is going to work the way that it is without having to go to index.html specifically. Um, all right. And then we need to do a listen. And we got to give it a port. 
Uh, we'll get this where it'll work in production. So we'll put that in here. 3,000, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Console.log. So there's a tempest string here. Server is running on port. Uh, uh, oops. Same thing that we have up there. And boom, our server should be ready to run. Now it's not, we can't compile this TypeScript yet and I will get that working really quickly here. So if we run TSC right now, we're gonna have issues, but we need to generate an uh, TSC config file. So let me um, clear all this out. Uh, we're gonna wanna include a file. So I'm gonna do include our uh, server slash server.ts. We're gonna exclude node modules. That will cause some serious problems. Um, we're gonna have an out directory here because we want to output um, our files to our dot slash server uh, folder, uh, which is why I created that there. So that way we compile everything and then we just run it out of there. Um, all right, and then we're gonna have a lib of ES2017. I don't know that this would really matter that much for this small project, but let's just do everything anyways. Uh, we'll do node and express. Uh, this might be good enough. Let's see. So if I run TSC down here, uh, we got an error. So it specify include password. Uh, no input files are found. I need dot slash here. I need dot slash here. No input were found we did create this right oh it's not server it's source whoops whoops all right there we go and now we'll see that we outputted this server.js so that means that we should be able to just run this by doing node server server.js and there we go we're running in port 3000 if we come over here and refresh now we are running but we don't have bootstrap yet so let's get this whole thing set up so let's create some scripts here I know a lot of people use Webpack or whatever, but I find when I'm doing something simple like this, I just create node scripts. If you're gonna do React or something, maybe you would wanna use Webpack. Um, but for something simple like this, it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna say, um, uh, we're gonna watch everything. So our TypeScript is just gonna be TSC minus W. Our um, SAS, we're gonna do watch SAS, and I'm gonna use npx here because I'll install everything locally. So npm or node SAS um, slash slash sash slash main .scss. and we're gonna output this to public slash uh, styles .css. and we're gonna watch this uh, our SAS folder. There we go, that should work, maybe. Then we're gonna watch our server here with nodemon. So we're gonna say nodemon, I think I need npx here as well. On Mac, this works a little easier, but if you put npx, that should work on both. Uh, nodemon, I'm going to uh, run server slash server.js, but I'm gonna watch uh, source for any changes. And then I usually create a dev that runs all of these. So then I can run npm run dev and all this will work. So npm run all dash dash parallel watch colon star. There we go. This will probably not work, um, but maybe it will. I just noticed that all of my uh, stuff that I installed is in it. Whoa, what over here? Oh, that's why it's not in here. There we go. That time it worked, and now it's all in here as well. Uh, and so we should be able to come over here and just run npm run dev if we did everything right. 
we're on port 3000 and we're something's happening something all right so now what we can do is we can override or we want to pull in on our index.html we want to link our styles so styles.css now when we run this look we have bootstrap in here this is pretty cool so when we're theming our bootstrap this uh there's a document on this um on what you can override uh, but basically we can override like the theme color so let's go ahead and do this because this is probably one of the main things you're going to do so what i'm going to do is create a variables file in here not scss and then i'm going to pull this in which is what uh how we override the themes and then i'm going to make this the um covalence blue for my primary colors uh, and then when we come down here as long as we import these variables import variables dot, we don't even need the dot css but we do need dot slash as long as we import these before bootstrap then our variables will take precedence so now that i saved this and i come over here uh, we'll see that our primary color actually is the one uh, that we were working with. So let's see how this comes into effect. So if I go to my index.html, and let's say that I wanted to change the background color here to the primary theme. If I run this, we'll see now it's that primary color. Let's look at what that is. And it is 0091EA. So even though we changed that theme file, here primary that changes throughout the entire um, everything in bootstrap will now be using this color instead of the default color so like if I took this out since this is um, blue and the default bootstrap one is blue I'm gonna make this red just for good measure so you can tell what's happening here uh, so if I rerun this Oh, it's not watching this one right now, so let me save over here. And there we go, now it's red. So this is really cool. So if I come into my index.html here, and let's say that I create another row, another call, and this time I do an h1, uh, not text dash primary, right? And now look, our text is red. So that variable has now permeated through everything in our Bootstrap project, which is really cool. So this makes it easy for you to override things to whatever colors you need rather than the default of the Bootstrap gives you. And there's a lot of other things that you can override. I don't think that it does a whole lot of good for me to tell you about those, except to go to the theming section in the Bootstrap docs, uh, which is right here. Uh, and then it'll tell you everything that you can do in here. So um you know it's got like down here you'll see the breakpoints are in here so if you wanted to change when bootstrap broke on small medium large extra large you could do that here um, that's something that probably happens pretty often uh you're definitely going to want to change you know the default font uh sometimes um most people don't want to take the default font that bootstrap gives you um and all these variables are updatable so then you can go in and add your own uh, CSS. So you could come in here, or SCSS, and I could say home.scss, and then what you'll wanna do is in your main, after Bootstrap, uh, import you know your, your pages. So I'd say uh, home.scss. All right, I just can just do home. Now I put like my pages. Call this like my overrides, new trap. Now that file will get pulled in as well. So I could just have my own custom CSS in here. Um, you know, whatever. I don't even know what you could put at this point. Bootstrap does everything for you. <laughs> uh, but you know, if you wanted custom CSS, you could put it in here. And then it's always getting compiled into this one CSS file. So we don't have to change anything. We're always just pulling it in right here. We don't have to link Bootstrap itself here. Uh, we only have to link our style sheet because we are actually compiling all of Bootstrap 
whenever uh, we do that compilation. So that was a real quick run through of how to get Bootstrap up and running to where you're overriding things and you're pulling it into your own project. And this is really powerful. Uh, I do this every time I create a new project uh, because, you know, there's things in Bootstrap just don't make sense, like the colors and sometimes the fonts uh, that aren't going to make sense for your project and you're going to want to pull these in. So go out there, play with this. I'll check it into my GitHub and put a link in the video. So check it out in the description below. And let me know what you think. Have fun. Get out there and do some bootstrapping.